What's up, everybody? Welcome on in to The Call-Up, presented by Heineken. I'm Susanna Collins, along with my gal, Jillian Sackovitz. And, uh, oh my goodness, we have, we've got so much to talk about today. We have such a fun show. We have not one, but two guests yeah, today. We, do. we catch up with Leandro Gonzalez Perez, uh, a new member of Inter Miami, who is in the bubble with his team, but didn't actually play. So that's kind of fun. So, so he's chomping at the bit to get I mean, back and get this team a so win. much. And then this is so cool. You guys, we have pro and FIFA referee Katie Nesbitt on the show. She was the first woman to officiate an MLS title game of any kind. And uh, she officiated the MLS's back tournament final, which is so cool. So we're going to get her take on that experience, what life is like as a referee. Um, it was enlightening. You it was hear, so and I, I know what some of you are thinking at home. You're thinking, oh, you had a referee on what's like, it was, no. I could have talked to her all day. It was interesting. It was enlightening and it was real. And she might have some um, crystal ball info into the future. So she pay attention, might. people. She okay. just might. Yeah, that was a really, really fun interview. You're going to love it. Uh, so let's get right into it because I just want to show off what Jill and I are wearing right now. If you are listening, we are ma- wearing the Black Lives Matter t-shirts that you saw all the MLS players wearing and coaches throughout the MLS's back tournament. These were designed by Warren Creval. Um, you can order these on the Black Players for Change d- right off their Instagram. I think there's a link. It's as just- simple as that or on um, Warren Creval's website. You just yep. type it in. And guys, 100% of the profits, they're going to go to charities that align with the Black Players for Change and the Players Coalition in the fight for racial inequality. So get your hands on these. Can't have a better message and so can't cool. be putting your money towards a better cause. Yeah. And on that note, want to give um, a shout out. If you guys didn't see it during the MLS's back tournament final on ESPN, they showcased a video by Black Arrow um, called Say It Loud, and it was so incredible. So if you go to the Black Players for Change Instagram account, which is at BPCMLS, there's a link to it. Please watch it. It's so powerful, uh, beautifully done, and just uh, a really, really incredible message. So we are super stoked to be supporting this and wearing these today. I think we look good, girl. I was so happy when this when I opened this up. A major, I know um, a major plus to 2020, and and let's keep it going. Okay, let's so. keep it going. There was if I, I don't know if you if you watch James Corden, um, he had a segment on with David Beckham. Might have heard oh, of gosh. him, and this was clearly a segment that was filmed pre pandemic because in it. Basically, uh, James Corden and David Beckham go to a spin class, which is full of people. This is why we know that it was pre-pandemic, because that is not happening Oops, at the I'm moment. I'm playing it right now. <laughs> but Jill's watching it. And David Beckham, during this spin class, Jill, is in head-to-toe, full kit, inter-Miami swag. He's got the jersey on with his name on the back, and he is just going to town on this bike, but literally in full like in the full kit so the question is are we here for workouts in full kits can i work out with david beckham i mean that's the that's that's the real question because i will work out i'll work out in a paper bag here's my next question for you if it can be with david would you beckham. put beckham's kit on right after his spin class yes 100 <laughs> percent. i would i would maybe too if you promise not promise to work out not Promise even a group workout. I'd I'm love not even to win it. I would <gasps> me, you, David Beckham in the kit with Beckham, okay. all three of us. I just thought of the next best idea ever. This is content gold, people. Content gold. Up next. This is interesting. This is an interesting one. So, uh, Zarek Valentin of the Houston Dynamo announced on uh, his social media, I believe on Instagram, that he is he's trying out the vegan lifestyle. He's going okay. vegan. I think his wife is already a vegan, and so he is going to give this a go. So he put Ooh. out a picture of like a very lovely looking a plate lot. of food and was like, wish me luck. Here goes my, my vegan journey. Oh, and I'm food. thinking, you just spent a month, over a month in a hotel. A- 
well, a hotel eating hotel food. Like, don't you want like a burger, pizza? I mean, like, this is where I go. We all I'm know. Not, I am we not a professional know. athlete. Hotel food yeah. can sometimes make you pack the pounds. Maybe this True. is a little bit of a detox, but um, veganism, that's no cheese, right? No cheese, okay. nothing. Mm. Dairy, no, bad. The thing is, I really, I do well with a little yogurt in the morning. Mm-hmm. Just saying. Um, I don't know, but you know who I've heard does it before she goes on tour? Who? Beyonce. Of course. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess. So who Beyonce. the heck am I? I know. Damn. I just think this year's been so hard. I think my emotional state would crumble if I I know. To- I'm already crabby and like yogurt. Yeah, or iced coffee without milk. Right. Exactly. It's I'm like looking, I am I'm getting teary eyed just thinking about it. I'm unstable as it is. <laughs> and so like you whack, you know, my my blood sugar, all of that goes out of whack. Like who knows? I will literally be like sobbing on the floor. So I give credit to Zarek for giving this a world. Stronger it, man than us. It ain't for me. <laughs> So this was such a great video. Portland, our winners. By the way, congrats, Portland. We haven't had a chance to actually congratulate Portland on winning the MLS's back tournament. but We bowed down to the better team. MLS's back tournament champions. Um, So upon returning to Portland, they tweeted out this video, which was so great. Goalkeeper Steve Clark was greeted by his wife and his dog. And they gave him the ultimate uh, sort of celebratory greeting. And this was the champagne bottle, just spraying it everywhere. The dog is running at him. I mean, it's such a a great, and she's literally chasing him around with this thing. What a wife. I know. I want a spouse like that. So I I was watching this. By a champagne shower every once in a while. Every time. I know, right? Like every time I walk back. Is that so much to ask for? God, uh, get no respect. But my, so I'm watching this video, Jill, and I'm like, God, this is so great. Like, what a great moment. And then I'm like, champagne showers. Mm. Are we here Mm -hmm. for the kind of, you know, champagne showers, beer showers? They had the big magnums of Heineken in the locker room after the end of the tournament. You saw that, you know, very iconic. Yes. Loved it. Are we here for the showers? Well, what do you think? I know you and I, as the professionals that we are, have had our own experience with trying to do our jobs and liquids. Yes. Uh, MLS, uh, Leandro Gonzalez Perez, who's coming up, will tell you uh, when that buzzer went off in 2018 and 73,000 people freaked out at Mercedes Benz Stadium, Atlanta mm-hmm. United won MLS Cup uh, against Portland. They all, and there's a great picture, threw their beer cups into the air and it made really great um, spirals great and looked amazing. But great I was visuals. walking out of that tunnel um, on the side of the supporter section to get out onto the field. And it really gets all up in your hair. It's not fun. I got some in my eye. And then I've been sprayed by a sprinkler once about five seconds before I was going on the air. Granted, it was water, but still it was really tough when your whole face gets wet in two seconds. So yeah logistically it's tough, but man, I'll take it. Like I will take some of that organized chaos because at this point it's like, it almost gives you a pass. Like, listen, I don't know if the sprinkler does, but like, I just got some alcohol in the face and then uh-huh. everyone's like, woo. Oh, man. And then, and then, you know, it kind of gives you a pass. Like I might blow this hit. Might not be my best questions, but it's all, it's all in good fun. Um, but I know you've also had your moments. I have. I have. You don't look too into it. No, this was, I'm dating myself. So whatever. 2012, um, I'm working in Chicago covering the White Sox. They send me to Detroit because this was a game where Detroit or Chicago could have clinched the pennant. Well, as it turns out, Detroit wins. They send me into Detroit's locker room. I... God, I mean, it was chaos. And like the, you have to keep in mind, these guys are prepared for it. They have the goggles on, so it's not getting in their eyes. I had, I can't remember who it was. One of the players took an entire bottle of champagne and literally dumped it over my head as I'm oh, trying to like, I'm the getting champagne. Nauseous. That's kind of gross. Like, can you not? In my eyes, my hair is just sticky, crunchy, ruined my brand new blazer that I had just gotten. Our camera equipment is getting completely destroyed and 
my eyes are literally burnt. Like I'm like this, walking around, my eyes closed. Oh. I can't. And then I have to do a live shot. Jill. That sounds disorienting. And so I'm like, <laughs> I'm literally like looking in the camera. My eyes are just like bright red because they're soaked in champagne. It took me, I had to wash my hair like I might, I took like a 45 minute hot shower and just wa- shampooed my hair like 10 times be- to get the champagne out. Clothes were ruined. So I like, it looks great. I like watching it, but I am not here for being inside. I'll tell you this. Chaos. When we were possibly anticipating that in the locker room for the supporter shield in 2018, which didn't happen. Oh, yeah. Um, they did have me hooked up like, all right, well, we'll get, you know, some stuff <gasps> aside for Jill. So I think it's the team you work for. Yeah. And also, don't we just sound like the worst? Like, Awful. this is a uh, sideline reporter problems. Okay, and we are so excited for this one. Time now for our AT&T call to the field. Leandro Gonzalez, Perez, defender. He is back with Major League Soccer now with Inter Miami. Sorry, Atlanta United fans. <laughs> he is a 2018 MLS Cup champion and a 2019 MLS All-Star. LGP, we've been, you've been on our list for a long time. We are so excited to have you. Uh, for those of you watching, LGP is one of the Many South Americans that are always changing the hair game today. He's rocking a little bit of a buzz cut a with, platinum. The blue, with the platinum in there. We love it. Yeah, it's a little different. And I have to cut it because when I did the color again, uh, I did bad. And I have three <laughs> colors in my head. This is why I had to cut it. <laughs> so you have had a crazy year. We'll talk to you about that. Um, but your new home now for your growing family is Miami. Leandro, how is life in Miami? Well, the life here is very good uh, for us, for, for the Argentinian guys. Uh, we have a lot of Argentinian here. Uh, we have a lot of people living here. We meet a lot of people uh, here in Miami. It's more close to, to my house, to, to Argentina. Mm-hmm. So it's more easy also to people come to visit me. And, and this is better for us. Uh, and we love we love the city. Always when we have uh, some times and on vacations, we we come here because we like the city and, and we like the weather. Uh, we like the, the live here. And, and when Paul calls me, I I say yes immediately. <laughs> Not a bad bad place to be. Um, Leandro, I want to ask you about your decision. To come to Miami because you had spent time in MLS, so beloved in Atlanta, but and then you left to go to Liga Mejis, and now you are back with Inter Miami. Why was this the right choice for you? Well, honestly, I, I don't expect my my come back to the MLS pretty soon, but. Uh, for the virus, for, for the COVID, uh, we were difficult times in Mexico, and this is why I have to to leave the club. Uh, we we made the, the best decision for for Tijuana, uh, and we think uh, leave the club and and give them some money uh, in exchange for them. Uh, it, it will be the best decision. Uh, and this is why I, I leave the, the Liga MX. I was. Good there. I, I was comfortable. I was playing good. I made a lot of goals for mine, <laughs> uh, for my position. But mm-hmm. uh, it what it is. Like uh, this COVID, this was well for for everyone, and, and this is the, the decision what I have to take. So yes, the pandemic made things crazy for everybody, including from MLS to Liga Max back to MLS, like you said, quicker than maybe you would have believed, even though I know maybe you thought you'd be back in MLS maybe one day. Um, But your story is slightly more crazy because you returned, went to join your team in Orlando in the MLS bubble, but because of all of the restrictions, and we're not even going to get into those, uh, you could not play in the MLS's (laughs) back tournament, but you had to go live in the bubble um, was that your decision? Was it important to you to go bond with your new teammates? And who on your team have you bonded with um, the quickest? What was it like to be living in the bubble but not able to play? Yeah, 
that was crazy because when I, when I signed and, and I came here, I, I was training here in Miami, getting ready to play the tournament. And, and one day, Victor Ushoa came into the locker room and he asked me, why you can't play? What? I say, I, I don't know that. So, and after that, I, I asked Paul and, and he told me, yes, maybe the new rules on the league. Um, and the players who came for the TAM or not the GAM, I don't know exactly what the rule was. Uh, they can't play this tournament. Uh, so it was hard because, you know, you're training every day for nothing. Like you, you always have in your mind the, the next game or of the weekend to, to prepare your, your ourself, uh, yourself for, for the game and, and try to, to be on the field. And, and I can, uh, so I take this opportunity to to work on myself, work in the my physical uh, part, in and try to to know my my new teammates and and try to help them as as more I can. Uh, and this is this this was my uh, my paper there, like your contribution, my role, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it also must have given you some time to really watch your new your new club and get a sense of of what this this team is like. So, in that time that you've had Leandro to kind of watch Inter Miami play, train with them, what have you seen from this team? I know it's it's their first MLS season and they're still looking for that first win, which I'm yeah. sure will come. But what do you see when you look at this team? Where do you see um, the biggest need? So we were so close in, in most of, of the games we lost. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them we, we deserve to win, I, I think, on, on my vision. Uh, but we are, we, we need to work, I think, more in, in the details, you know, because we are a new team. We need to know each other, like how how you want the ball, how you prefer like the pass or how he runs and how is the best run for, for the strikers and how is the best pass for the midfielders, you know, that's take time and, and you need it. Like, I think the pandemic was good for us, uh, for, for this time what I needed, but we are getting ready for, for the details now and, and the details may win or may lose, you know, so. Mm -hmm. I think we, we need to be ready for, for these details, make the balance for us and, and, make, and, and give to, to us the win. Inter Miami started off the year 0-5. And, and Leandro, that's why your role is so important because you know what it's like to, to be an expansion team and to all be new to the situation, new coaches, new players, and everything like that. So I think that's where you and your also your willingness to – involve everybody on the team is going to be so important for Inter Miami. And I'm sure that's why they were so excited to have you, but let's talk about the newest addition to Inter Miami. I know he hasn't arrived yet, um, but let's talk about Matuidi. And what was your reaction when you heard that that would be your new teammate? Well, a lot of names are around this school. You know? Yeah, there are. <laughs> when, when we listen some of them, mm -hmm. Matuidi, in, in that moment, we said, Okay, it's one more on the list. And okay, we'll see, you know. But when, when this was official, uh, it was crazy. Uh, he's a World Cup champion. He's an amazing player. He won a lot of titles in Europe. Uh, I think for me, he's one of the best midfielders in the world uh, in the last years. Uh, so it could be very important for us. He, he can give us a lot of good things. And, and we need to took them and and try to be better with him because he can help us a lot. Okay. So Exciting speaking stuff. of, speaking of, uh, uh some, you know, we, we like to have fun with some of the rumors because as you mentioned, we love rumors. Inter Miami is, uh, is a very, um, it's a very popular destination for a lot of <laughs> international players that, you know, right. the speculation, like, will he come? Will he come? And one of those names Messi, your fellow your fellow countryman. What what do you think? Do you think there's there's a chance 
Leandro? That Lionel Messi? So, uh, I would love if Messi can, can come here. Would you like, be starstruck a little bit if, Me if Messi or maybe like someone you grew up watching just walks up to you and is like, hey, teammate? <laughs> I say, hey, Leo, how are you? Hey. Like I every mean, day. So, that's the that's yeah, Argentine it's rare, connection. It's rare, it's rare. It's rare. Uh, they are big players and they are big personalities in the world. Like, you never think they could be like your teammates, you know? Science Matuidi, like, he's a big personality in the world. In French, he's huge. Like, you never think he would be your teammate. Like, uh, but it's great. This, this is what this thing has, you know? Uh, the popularity, like David, uh, he can bring a lot of players here. Mm -hmm. It's great for us as, as, a, as a players too. Uh, share, share the field with, with these kind of players. Would be amazing. You mentioned your new boss, David Beckham. We we ask everyone, the secretary, the security, <laughs> anyone at Inter Miami, we ask, have you, Leandro, met David Beckham? Not yet, not yet, ah! not yet. Uh, but I want you. I want you. Yeah, to. So us I, too. I am very excited to meet him. Yeah. Yeah, we keep trying to get my, him my on, the, too. on the my podcast. Well, that's a, it's a photo opportunity, you know, you've got to yeah. document that we keep, we keep asking him to come on the podcast and it just hasn't, <laughs> hasn't yeah. been able to fit it in his schedule yet. Yeah. My wife asked One me day. Anytime, when we met Beckham, when we met Beckham. So I don't know. I, say, I don't know. <laughs> I wish soon. Well, you have had, um, you know, one of your your teammates. There's a nice little South American and Argentine connection in in Inter Miami. Your teammate, uh, Matias Pellegrini. You had had a conversation with him about Paul McDonough, about playing in Major League Soccer, based on your experiences. When you are having these conversations with other players who are considering a move to Major League Soccer, Leandro, what do you tell them about the league? So all the time, good words, uh, because this league, is, this league is amazing for the players. Uh, I say a lot of times, uh, you have everything to do. Uh, they give you all tools uh, you need to to be happy here, uh, because the country is amazing, the security is amazing, uh, the league is amazing, the organization they have is amazing, the stadiums are amazing, the training facilities are so good. So. We normally, growing up in South America, like when you don't have these tools, you know, mm -hmm. and, and for us, for players, for family of the players, for everything is, it's amazing. And, and this is all I, I tell them. If you come here, you, you will enjoy to play soccer. Like, and, and this is the, the truth. <laughs> Leandro, let's take a step back a little bit with your time with Atlanta. Um, I can say as the sideline reporter and host of the team, you were one of the guys you could always rely on that he was going to talk to you and he was going to be honest with you. So I just want to say we appreciate that <laughs> uh, from a media perspective. But also, I mean, you had the hearts of the fans, your teammates, you know, the front office everybody you're facing your former team atlanta united next wednesday on august 26th uh for the first time since your return when when you think about seeing those guys again what comes to mind and where does your time with atlanta united um where is it in your heart so atlanta always will uh, be special for me uh, in in every single uh reason because i have my first daughter there i bought my first house there i i've been champions there uh, i spent a, a great time there with with the fans with, with the players i have a lot of friends i have a, a lot of moments in my in my heart in my, in my head and it will it will be always uh, special for me and and when the schedule uh, says I have to play against Atlanta, so I, I start to thinking all the time, like how how will be, like, you know. So it was special uh, play against my team, my my last team teammates. Uh, some uh, are friends. Uh, it, it would be well, but now I am defending Inter Miami jersey, and, and I have to play for them. Absolutely. And let me just ask you this, you know, because you came from League MX and you were scoring goals. If you score against Atlanta, 
Well, are you going to celebrate? <laughs> no, no, of course not. Of course not. Uh, what a guy. So what a guy. Like, That's are, why we love always, you. They, they so will be polite. always in my that head. Would, that would be too uh, much. I'd be too much for Atlanta fans. We couldn't yeah, take it. We couldn't handle but, it. But also it's too much for me because, honestly, Atlanta is a special. Uh, I have to leave for different reasons. Uh, it doesn't matter now. Like, it's, it's past. Yeah. Uh, but... But now I, I am in Miami. I'm happy here, and I am very comfortable. Uh, and I and I do my best for for this team. Uh, it doesn't matter who who will be in front of me. Uh, but yes, Atlanta will be always special. Uh, Leandro, I want to ask you about um, Frank DeBoer. And this was kind of big news that came after uh, during the MLS's back tournament that he was leaving Atlanta United. Uh, mutually agreed. To, to part ways after 18 months with the club. What do you think? I know you, you played under him. What do you think went wrong there? Oh, a question. <laughs> uh, it's a little hard to talk about this mm -hmm. because I, I said one year ago when I spoke on the media in the All-Star game, uh, I said for me, a lot of change on this team, on, 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 on this club, and, and we are, are not comfortable. So we we don't like a lot as, as a player. Uh, but are they decisions? So we, we try to do always our, our best. Mm -hmm. But we never take the chemistry, you know, like we, we need the players as a coach, you know? So uh, we never, in, in these two years, I, I never seen like, this chemistry uh, like yeah. we have with Tata, for example. Uh, yeah. The idea, the, the relationship, the players, the coaches. Uh, so it never be been clear. But I mean, uh, this is, I I think it's it's good for Atlanta. It's a new change. It's a new start. Um, and I wish the best, obviously, except against us. That was a very Steven honest Glass. answer. Thank you. Uh, as Stephen Glass said, their new interim coach will now be the third coach ever for Atlanta United. Um, he said he thought there's a freedom needed with this team, and that's something he intends to do starting this weekend. So we'll see how it all pans out. Uh, Leandro, now you're on this show. Obviously, we're speaking in English, and something that struck me so much when I got there is you know I'm practicing my Spanish and I'm trying to get better, but I could never, ever do this interview in Spanish. Um, let alone on TV. Sometimes the camera's in your face. You know the stadium. The, so the stadium. I'm a little nervous. Sometimes <laughs> I don't have never... the right word, you know. But... I know. But that's my point is for some reason, you know, Atlanta United now and Inter Miami, very heavily Spanish-speaking team. So you've got the mix. You have the MLS veterans um, and then you've got the Spanish speaking players and it's a beautiful mix. We saw how well it worked in Atlanta. Um, but for you, you really, really committed to learning English and you wanted to put yourself in situations where I remember when I first met you in 2018, you would sit there and just search and search and search for the right word. Why was learning English so important for you to get yourself to this level? And how did you do it? Because it is so hard. Well, thank you, thank you for for the words and and the appreciate the appreciate uh, one, appreciate something like that. Yeah, uh, but I I don't study, uh, but I I try all the time listen, you know, and talk. It doesn't matter if I do good or if I do bad. So if I if I if I do bad, we we laugh and and when and you explain to me how I say good and, and I try to use. It. I don't know if I learn to talk in, in past. I, I all the time, I, I all the time try to talk in past to to learn. It, you know, uh, my wife speaks perfect English. And mm. Sometimes I, I practice with her, but I don't like practice a lot because she's all the time correct me, and, <laughs> and, I, and I don't like it. Spouses <laughs> but, can do that. Yes, yeah. that's what wives are for. Corrections. <laughs> but, yeah, I I hate when when she, when she told me. <laughs> No, this is not like this. This is like that. You have to say like that. 
I'll say, okay, okay, okay. But, but all the time I try to talk. Uh, this is why I learned. This is, I think for me is the best way because I don't like sitting the table with the book, you know, and practice or, or, or whatever. Uh, I, I learned talking. A little bit ago, you, you mentioned your wife. Um, we also heard your uh, your little daughter in in the background. I know you're the fa mm -hmm. father of a beautiful little girl, and you and your wife are expecting baby number two. So congrats. Yeah. This is very, very Thank exciting. You. I noticed I did a little um, stalking on your on your Instagram as we do before we as we do. These. okay. And I noticed I saw your your tattoo which is your daughter's infant yeah. footprint on your arm. Yes, there it is. Here. It's, I mean, yeah. adorable. What a great idea. Are you going well, to get another tattoo yes, of the same thing? Here. Yes. Like, okay. Yay. I will make in the way, depend how kids I have. You know? <laughs> how I, many I, feet are we going to have going <laughs> up that arm? I, I expect three only. Three feet. Uh, because now the second one will be girl uh, also. Okay. So Girl I, dad. I am I, I will be waiting for, for the boy. So Leandro wish, Jr. I wish that the one will be the boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, girl dad for now. Not a bad place. Well, now he's a girl dad, yeah. <laughs> to be. Yeah. All right, Leandro, we thank you so much for your time. Is there anything we didn't talk to you about that you wanted to talk about today? <laughs> when is your second baby coming? What is the date? Uh, it's pretty soon. Like it's in 20 days. It's the, the baby due is September 13th. Like, oh my goodness. I well, your think... wife is a rock star. We wish you guys all the best. I know she's yeah, a good my, sport. My wife is, is it's like a bomb. It's almost to explode. Like <laughs> the belly is so big. Uh, yeah, but, but she's great. Can she hear she, you right now? She's making a great job. Like playing with Emmy. She's she's adorable, but she doesn't stop. Like, uh -huh. She's all the time running into the house, almost close to the the dancer every every time. Uh, but but she's making a, a great job, and, and she's a warrior like me. Rock star, rock <laughs> star, Leandro. <sighs> thank you so much. Best of luck with the new the season and the new baby. So many good things happening for oh, you. We're thrilled. All right, time now for another AT&T call to the field. And this is a call up first. We are so absolutely thrilled to bring in FIFA and pro referee Katie Nesbitt, who broke ground by officially officiating in the MLS is back tournament final. Um, we are so absolutely thrilled to have you, Katie, in such a – I mean, you made history. This is the first time in MLS competition that a woman has been called upon to officiate in a title match. Now that you've had kind of, you know, a week or so to uh, to reflect on it, can you tell us what that moment meant to you? Um, well, thank you guys so much for having me on. This is an awesome opportunity. Um yeah, so to be on that match, man, it was such an honor to get that appointment. Um, it's, for me, the first time I've ever been appointed to a final, so already that was huge. Um, but to also, you know, be the first woman to be on an MLS final, um, that, that meant a lot to me, to have that impact, to, you know, mark that achievement, um, and to kind of hopefully show on a larger scale what women can do. Well, we were we were excited to watch you. And that kind of begs the question is, um, if we have it correct, you also teach chemistry at Townsend. Uh, and then in your spare time, you're a official, a referee. What was that journey like? How does somebody become an official? And how do you manage having a full-time job and also squeezing in officiating while, and then let's add the pandemic to it, the whole mix? <laughs> oh, sure. Um, so uh, I'll start you off. Um, I taught at Towson for two years. So I was a chemistry professor there. Um, I haven't taught there in about a year and purely just because I wanted to see what it was like to focus on soccer. Um, so that's been uh, just a complete change for me and has made this a little bit easier to be fair, you know, juggling 
working on the field, working off the field all at the same time is, is a lot, but so many officials do it. Um, and mm. I, I think it's phenomenal that, that everybody can balance that all so that they can still be involved in soccer. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it's, it's been a journey for me, um, to just get to experience, uh, soccer by itself. Um, and I think that for me probably made going to this tournament even easier, um, because I had the time and I had the availability. So, yeah. That's amazing. Um, it's just, it's, we're all about the the lady power over here. And as somebody, well, as somebody, as somebody who um, has, you know, broken barriers, we want to touch a little bit um, on the fact that, you know, you are a woman in a, in a male dominated industry as are, you know, Jill, Jill and myself. And with that always uh, comes some challenges or, you know, stories, some stories, <laughs> character building <laughs> moments. Sure. <laughs> Is there, has there been any moments in particular for you um, where being a woman has been, um, you know, extra, extra challenging? Like, do you find that maybe players treat you a little differently? It just kind of give us the, give us a taste of what the experience is like being a woman in this role. Yeah, for sure. There's definitely been incidents along the way. Um, one of my favorite ones to tell is um, how I literally went to a stadium to officiate a match and it was a, a men's game and they security wouldn't let me in um, because they couldn't believe that I was an official for the match. Stop <laughs> and it. I ended up, yeah, it was, it was unbelievable. I, I had to argue with him and call my boss. And, Here's you know. my badge. Look at <laughs> this is not a costume people. Exactly. So, you know, like, yeah, of course, we, we run into those situations most of the time where people can't believe what you're doing. You know, I'm sure you guys have seen the same thing. So, you know, one thing that I can say for sure, being in MLS, the time that I have, um, the respect that I've gained from my colleagues, from the players, um, from the coaches has all been phenomenal. You know, everybody has really always treated me like a referee, not like a female referee. And, you know, I, I've appreciated that so much. It's such a professional um, setting and, and they've always treated me professionally. Funny how that works, that that's an added layer that we are so appreciative of. Oh, they're so nice. They're so respectful. <laughs> Suzanne and I will so often talk about like having worked in other sports, um, NFL, NBA, uh, collegiate sports and we get to MLS. And we're like, we really, uh, we really like the MLS culture. We like the players. We like the respect that we get. And it's like a lot, of, you know, my male colleagues, they don't have to have that conversation. They're not um, praising people for being treated appropriately. Uh, and I can relate so much. I remember when I covered high school sports and I worked for a local TV station and I would go on the sidelines of a football game as one of two media there. I'd have the big, macho athletic director come argue with me like what are you doing over here i'm like yeah i'm a 23 year old girl that broke into this game because i really <laughs> want to be on the sidelines yeah. of a high school football game on a sunday morning you right, got exactly. me <laughs> and it is so <laughs> aggravating and then you come off as difficult or witchy because you're arguing with them and you're really just trying to do your job right. oh, we could right. go on forever we'll save this for a bar or the next time we have you on katie but let me ask you this in terms of your work on the field how has COVID changed the way you have to officiate? You know, sometimes I thought to myself right now, we're all trying to social distance the best we can. Two mm -hmm. guys start going at it, then you have to pop in the middle. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait, we're not all social distancing. How has it changed your job on the field? Uh, that's a great question. Um, you know, the MLS uh, is back tournament was the first opportunity. Um, you know, we in the United States had to get back into the mix of that. And we actually had a lot of calls beforehand um, to kind of prepare us for that atmosphere, right? So not only are we talking about how does this work with, you know, social distancing and stuff, but how does this work um, without fans? How does this work with um, how the players are gonna respond to each other? How does that even work with um, what you're gonna be able to hear on the field and things like that? So um, we did a lot of preparation for ourselves um, as a group and individually to be prepared for the situations that would be different. Um, and, you know, it. I think one of the greatest parts about that bubble was um, how much everybody kind of came together to realize that this was going to be different. And if we wanted to play soccer, then we all kind of had to do our part. So, you know, even when I felt like the players 
came together in certain situations, it still wasn't the same as, you know, pre-COVID. People still, they wanted to come together, but as soon as they realized, oh, wait a second, um, this is kind of a different situation. Um, it, it actually, in some cases, made our job a little bit easier at times um, just because of that. So, Katie, one of the, the elements of this MLS's back tournament that we saw that Jill and I were were huge fans of is that we got a little peek behind the curtain with the enhanced audio. And when oh, yeah. we go to the VAR, looking. we were actually privy to the conversations that went in to ultimately making the decision on a call, which as for viewers, I thought it was such a fantastic yeah, and insightful mm. uh, move. From a referee's standpoint, what were your thoughts on that added element to these broadcasts? That's a great question. Um, I actually got to participate in one of those. Uh, oftentimes the AVAR, so the assistant VAR, doesn't um, ha have necessarily a chance to talk on those. Um, mm -hmm. But I was there for one of them. So it was actually, you know, not only did we kind of uh, make the decision that this would be a good added thing for the game, but also to kind of experience it myself. Um, the, the feedback from everybody was just like you were saying, this is really great. And, and to be honest, as referees, we want you to know what's going on. You know, it, it's not supposed to be this curtain in front of everything where, you know, we're making these secret decisions, right? That, that's not how we see it. We are making honest, you know, judge decisions based on, you know, the criteria in front of us. Mm -hmm. And so for the public to get to see that that's really just what's going on, um, I, I think that was such a positive um, and, and really, you know, something that possibly we could keep going at some point. It's just so often referees can get vilified for, you know, <laughs> making what is perceived to be the wrong call in a very crucial moment of the game. And what that allows the the fans and the viewers to to be you know, privy to is that conversation and the, and the reasoning. And so it's like, it almost, ta it takes the onus off, you know, it's like the rest aren't the bad guys. They're doing the best they can. They're making a judgment call based on what they say. And I, I, yeah. I'm just completely here for it because I'm team referee. I think you guys do a bang up job. So Katie, this is your chance before we let you go. <laughs> what should people all those people on Twitter, what should people know that people don't understand that you always say to amongst each other, like people don't understand X. Talk to the fans, Katie. Mm. I mean, <laughs> great. People, people don't back. understand that we are honestly here for the game and to produce the best game that we possibly can. Like we want to protect the players. We want to have the best soccer that we can. Um, and we want everybody to have a good time. So honestly, we are working so hard both on the field and off the field to make the best decisions possible for the game always. So there is never any background to that or some secrets. It's it's honestly trying to do what's best for what we all love. So. And should the fans get so fired up about VAR still? <laughs> still? <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. So get used to it, people. It's here to stay. It's <laughs> definitely here to stay. Uh, Katie, one last question for you before we let you go. Um, as we said at the top of the show, I mean, it, it was just incredible to watch you um, officiating that final match and just breaking down barriers for for women and and little girls. What advice would you have for for any young female watching that's like? That's what I want to do. I want to be a referee. What piece of advice would you give to those girls? Um, listen, I mean, you can you can definitely set your goals. You can set your dreams, um, and they're perfectly achievable if if you put the time and, and your mind to it. Really, you know, it, it's going to take a lot of work, and and for women, sometimes that's different work, and sometimes that's harder work, but. There's really nothing that is stepping in the way of you achieving what you really want to do, and that's that's something that I've learned along the way, and and hopefully that I can be an example of that to others. So, so guys, this past week we got the chance to kick back, grab a Heineken Zero Zero, whatever you're drinking, and get some more MLS action. And all teams are going to return to play this week. Uh, we just oh. chatted with Katie Nesbitt. You can catch her as well. Uh, she has a match this weekend and it's going to be the next step for MLS. They, in many ways, along with the NWSL, paved the way, Suze, with the bubble. 
and the concept. Um, And now we see the NBA doing it. So major props to them. And now it's really like pressure's on. I know. And And I I know I'm excited to get back into work and get into a stadium. I'm hosting and doing sideline for Atlanta United. And it's all Mm going to look different. But that's nothing we can't deal with. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, it, it's it's hard to use the word normal under these circumstances because right. it doesn't exist anymore. You know, it's like, what is that? We, we can't even define what normal actually is. But the fact that regular season games are starting, they already have started. Hey, Nashville SC got their first win. Woo-woo. Cheers, Cheers to, to you, you. Nashville. Um, I just, it, it feels like this is, this is the next little, this is the next step. This is the next step to getting back to what eventually we will hopefully one day recognize as normal. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to have a full weekend of games. We've got a ton of MLS content coming your way. I will be hosting a weekend preview show presented by AT&T. Um, Kaylin Carr and I will be hosting that. So we'll be looking ahead to the weekend and previewing some of the big matchups. And, and that comes out this week. So that'll yeah, help you kind of get set. If you're feeling a little bit like a fish out of water, I know I am in my prep. I think that's a great little uh, 101 yeah. back into the situation. And I know us in Atlanta, as we get back into work doing games on Fox Sports South, I can't believe I'm saying that out I loud. Know. Um, Just like everybody else, it's going to look a little different. Our interviews will probably be, I'm not in their face. Instead, it'll be a two box, just like you and I are yep. right now. And still asking the questions. I'll miss kind of stalking and finding and running after the managers. Uh, but it does make my job a little bit easier. But yeah, it'll it's still more be, controlled. It'll still be myself hosting and then Kevin Egan, Dan Gargan alongside um, me at the set. And we'll just be a little further apart than usual. And I'm so excited to get back to work and to get back to work safely. So a big, a big cheers to that. You know what? That kind of makes me want to give you like a <gasps> virtual. No. After I just. I would never. Completely. I would never. I'm in my Heineken. parents' basement. Remember, I can't be Heineken zero, zero, zero shower. Shh. I hey, can't be we can celebrate. We can celebrate MLS Ooh. regular season coming back, y'all. That that I would give a Heineken zero zero shower to. I will say, if I didn't have to clean all of this, yeah. <laughs> up. So it's virtual, like everything else these days. Um, our next episode, guys. I know, I know you're gonna, I know you're gonna miss me, but um, Susanna is taking a little vacay. What? Um, also known as going to my parents' lake house. <laughs> Which you are fine. taking time off. I know. I know. Honestly. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. You haven't done anything, Suze, in months. You you haven't, you haven't like hosted 1 a.m. and 9 p.m. Oh, pre and know. post game you content. Know. And yeah. you haven't been a co-host of the call up. I'm and doing slacker. Instagram lives. I'm a slacker. I'm a Who real to take a slacker. I know. Rude. Completely rude. So you're going to have to deal with that. You me, so deserve it. Good for yeah. you. Thank you, girl. But um, we're going to have a fun fill-in co-host for you. Jill is going we to will. crush it and hold you're it You're leaving me in good hands. We'll put I, it that way. Abso- absolutely. So you have that to look forward to. But I will be back. And uh, yeah, and I will be just all you know refreshed. Maybe have a little, little mm-hmm. tan going. We'll see. Probably. Can't wait. All right, guys. We'll see you soon. Bye, guys. Cheers.